My name is Pam Carter and I'm Head of Primary Years here at St Peter's. I am. I've made the decision, which is a really hard decision, to retire in June. Um, it's a good opportunity for somebody new to take the role, which I think has been built and developed, um, but also um, it's time for me. It's, a, it's the right time for me and my family, so yeah, I think it's, it's good for all of us. Yes, I am, um, and my other information gives that away anyway. So I came in my secondary education, and I started here in 1972 and finished in 1976. So that was from years eight to 12. Very different back then. So I was in the pilot program. I was the very first group of students to go to Ironbark, and that was in 1974. And in 1974, as most people know, that was when the Brisbane floods occurred. And because of the flooding, there were a lot of um, difficulties in supply of the materials to finish off Ironbark prior to us as a group going. And there was only one group that year that went. There were 28 of us. And so when we arrived at Ironbark, there were actually no windows in any of the dorms or or any of the rooms. So with the, the huge winds that were coming through Crow's Nest at that time, it actually got very, very chilly. There was also no heating at all. So anything that we had to heat, we had to have wood fires and that included any cooking, but also any of the um, uh, washing our clothes or even washing ourselves. So any of our showers, if we wanted a hot shower, we had to boil the water over an open fire first. So lots of things have really changed since then, but the essence of what Iron Bark does hasn't, I don't think. For St Peter's, um, I think again, the essence of St Peter's is, has always remained the same. I think the care um, of the students is paramount and the offerings that have been given to people is also there. I have always loved the diversity of St Peter's, even when I was here in the 70s. We had boarders from all over the world and different people made up our environment, which was really very exciting um, as a student, as a young student. Um, but I think the breadth of offerings, the size of the school, the excellence in what St Peter's does now is way beyond what it was when I was here. So it was a bit more of a, a local secondary school, a, a small local secondary school than it is now. As an adult, as a mature adult, you come back and you reflect on your time. And I think for most adolescents going through high school, sometimes you're racked with doubts about yourself. And I think, um, even though St Peter's gave me lots of opportunities, I think that um, as coming back as an adult, as a professional, has, I'm a lot more confident as a, as a person and as a professional than I was when I was a teenager. Now, interestingly enough, I never really thought of teaching as a career, even though I had great teachers along the way. Um, I left St Peter's and went to university and did social work for a few years before I realised that that probably wasn't my calling. So I looked around to see what else I might be interested in doing and teaching was one of those things that I sort of thought, oh, that, I'll give that a go and um, immediately fell in love with it. But it wasn't something that I, I wasn't one of those people who had always wanted to be a teacher right from the, um, my young days. So uh, I went into teaching and, uh, and I was a little bit older I guess than a lot of the people who were in the teachers college at that time and just really loved uh, all aspects of teaching but particularly the uh, individuality of getting to know students and, and learning how students learn was, was really interesting for me right from those very early days. Mm. I think the soft skills for anybody these days is just as important as the, the qualifications and the hard skills that you receive at a university education. And I think one of the things that for me is really important as, as being a teacher is to be able to be flexible um, and to be able to think critically but creatively. I think uh, more and more with uh, the changing world that we have, we have to be able to be able to adapt and to be flexible, but also be very resilient. And I think um, I've learnt those capacities if I didn't have those. Um, but the other thing I think uh, I've learnt um, that is really important is to be a good listener, to be able to not judge first, something I still sometimes have to do myself and I think that we all jump to conclusions sometimes, but to be a good listener and listen really well to people um, to find out exactly what's going on before we make a decision about how we're going to move forward. Mm.
a couple of things come to mind. And the first one I think I've just spoken about, one is around um, change management. So I love change. I'm, I'm actually somebody who uh, relishes new starts and, and really gets involved in that part of things. But it's taken me a while to realise that not everybody loves change and so to be patient with people and to um, and to also moderate uh, my enthusiasm sometimes for change has also been something that I've had to um, it's very rewarding I love making those changes in in communities or in systems but I also have to make sure that um, I'm not challenging people far too much when I do that so that's one thing. My second one is children. I think children themselves are the most challenging, but the most rewarding, um, particularly little kids. You, you can't ever think that you've got it nailed. And one moment you'll be talking to a child that you could be tearing your hair out. And the next minute they'll come up with something and you've got tears of joy happening because they are just, um, they're just the essence of why we do what we do. So they're very challenging, but they're also very rewarding. I think my last one around that is in the last few years has been around parents. I've loved, loved working with parents um, and found that, and I know they find me challenging sometimes, but also very rewarding when we've got it together and we work together for a, um, a good outcome. I'll miss the, the busyness of St Peter's. I love that, um, the busyness that, that brings an energy. Um, even last year when we had COVID, um, it was really interesting to see that we were very busy and we were trying to do all of those changes at once, but without the energy of the children and the, the parents and the staff here on campus, it, it had a very different energy. And I think that energy and that busyness I'll certainly miss. I would say whatever you choose to do, whether it's education or not, be passionate about what you do. Um, be open-minded and work hard. I think not everything necessarily comes on a platter to you. Um, and certainly if you want to do well, you have to work hard at whatever you do, but be passionate about it. I think um, education more and more is, I, I really believe it's a calling. It's not just a job. And so working hard, being passionate about it makes it easier um, to do, even though it's a hard um, vocation to go into. It's, it's challenging, but it's also incredibly rewarding. So be passionate, make sure that that's, you're doing it for the right reasons, um, but work hard with it as well. Yes, well, I'm, I'm pursuing lots of different bits and pieces at the moment because I don't want to get out of education completely. I would really like to stay, put my finger in there somehow, whatever that looks like. So I'm pursuing a few different aspects of that at the moment. I have a new grandchild, my first grandchild, and so um, the ability to uh, spend a bit of time, I guess, with, um, with family again will be really exciting and hopefully there'll be more grandchildren, not just Hugh, although he's, uh, he's the apple of our eye at the moment, um, and to travel when, when, as soon as we can. Yes, I, I think actually there are three things that come to mind. Appreciate everything that you have here. It's an amazing school. Um, Enjoy it, relax and enjoy your time, whether it's small or large, long or short, and work together. There's, life is too short to have conflict and to be uh, at each other. So work together and this place is amazing and will continue to be so if people do those three things.